Hello, all you Spooky Corner fans. Today we take you to the Whaley House. According to the Travel Channel's America's Most Haunted, the Whaley House is the number one most haunted house in the United States. Although we cannot state positively that the Whaley House is really haunted, the voluminous documentation of paranormal occurrences at the site makes a compelling case. But if there are ghosts at the Whaley House, who are they and why are they here? The Whaley House was not only a family home, but also various businesses, including Thomas Whaley's own general store, a ballroom, a billiard hall, school, and polling place. Significant events such as the seizure of the court documents and records of 1871 and the suicide of Violet Whaley in 1885 profoundly affected Thomas and Anne Whaley. These events, as well as the hanging which occurred on the property before the house was constructed, have suffused the Whaley house with an air of mystery and added its reputation as something more than just California State Historic Landmark. The earliest documented ghost at the Whaley House is Yankee Jim. James, aka Santiago Robinson, was convicted of attempted grand larceny in San Diego in 1852 and hanged on a gallows off the back of a wagon on the site where the house now stands. The local newspaper reported that he kept his feet in the wagon as long as possible, but was finally pulled off. He swung back and forth like a pendulum until he strangled to death. Although Thomas Whaley had been spectator at the execution, he did not let it dissuade him from buying the property a few years later and building a home for his family there. According to the San Diego Union, soon after the couple and their children moved in, heavy footsteps were heard moving about the house. Whaley described them as sounding as though they were made by the boots of a large man. Finally, he came to the conclusion that these unexplained footfalls were made by Yankee Jim Robinson. Another source stated that Lillian Whaley, the Whaley's youngest daughter who lived in the house until 1953, had been convinced the ghost of Yankee Jim haunted the old house. A visitor to the museum in 1962 mentioned that the ghost had driven her family from their visit there more than 60 years earlier. Her mother was unnerved by the phantom walking noise and the strange way the windows unlatched up and flew up. Many visitors to the house have reported encountering Thomas Whaley himself. The late June reading, former curator of the museum said, we had a little girl, perhaps five or six years old, who waved to a man she said was standing in the parlor. We couldn't see him, but often children's sensitivity is greater than an adult's. However, many adults have reported seeing the apparition of Mr. Whaley, usually on the upper landing. Other visitors have described seeing or sensing the presence of a woman in the courtroom. I see a small figure of a woman, one visitor said, who has a swarthy complexion. She is wearing a long, full skirt reaching to the floor. The skirt appears to be a calico or jingham, a small print. She has a kind of cap on her head, dark hair and eyes, and she is wearing gold hoops in her pierced ears. She seems to stay in this room, lives here, I gather. None of the Whaley's fit this description but the house was rented out to numerous tenants over the years. Perhaps the mysterious woman in the courtroom was one of these. The Whaley House stands silently watching over San Diego Avenue as it has done for a century and a half. Every day visitors come from around the world to tour the historic museum. It contains so much history within its walls that even the non-believer will enjoy the tour. For believers and skeptics alike, the house draws them back time.
time and again in search of those elusive ghosts. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more videos. Hello all you Spooky Corner fans. Today I bring you to a spooky cemetery in San Diego. San Diego has a rich history with its earliest inhabitants dating back nearly 9,000 years. Its beautiful natural scenery, pristine shoreline, and abundance of cultural and historical sites attract many, many visitors each year. But amongst all this, there exists another side to America's finest city, the darker, more mysterious side that draws in those intrigued by the paranormal. And it's no surprise that in a city so many centuries deep in history, there are places where the spirits of the dead seem to linger. Not wanting to move on to the other side, they appear in many different forms, whether intending to haunt or just tormented by their uncertain existence. Their presence has been witnessed time and time again. In Old Town San Diego Historic Park, there is a place called El Campo Santo Cemetery. It's a seemingly peaceful burial ground where many of San Diego's deceased were laid to rest for all eternity. The cemetery, located in the Old Town San Diego Historic Park, was built in 1849 and was used until 1880. It's just a few blocks away from the city's most haunted building, the Whaley House. Founded as a Catholic cemetery, Today, only 477 of the original graves are still visible. It is said that the burial ground is only a fraction of what it used to be. All seemed to be well at El Campo Santo until the city began to grow and the needs of the living seemed to supersede the respect for the dead. So when the people in San Diego saw a need for more roads, several graves were removed and relocated. A horse-drawn streetcar line was constructed that ran right through the cemetery, and later this same streetcar line became a modern road. Many graves were just paved over, leaving the souls of the dead trapped under the road. Residents and business owners in the surrounding area of the cemetery have reported witnessing disturbing poltergeist events, inexplicable electrical outages, lights going on and off, and appliances and alarm systems going off for no reason at all. Could it be the spirits of those whose body were so grossly disrespected crying out? Many seem to think so. Visitors to the area have also been spooked by their car alarms going off or being unable to start their vehicle when they parked in their lot in front of the graveyard. Another sign that the souls of the dead were not happy. But perhaps the most telling indication that El Campo Santo Cemetery is haunted is the fact that several ghosts have been seen, including the ghost of Yankee Jim Robinson, who was hung on the property of the Whaley House before it was constructed. Witnesses have recounted seeing other apparitions as well, some dressed in period costume, others that seem to glide above the graves, then disappear as they are approached freezing cold spots and floating orbs, flashes of light, and shadowy figures have also been reported. One such resident of Campo Santo, who has more cause for rage than most, is Antonio Gara. A chieftain of the Cupeño tribe, Gara lived in the mid-19th century. It was a time of strife between the United States and the Cupeños. The tribe was engaged in a civil disagreement with San Diego, which had begun living taxes against them while denying them the right to vote. Chief Gara brought that civil disagreement into the realm of the decidedly uncivil when he led a violent uprising in 1851. The execution of Antonio Gara added insult to injury, forced to stand before a firing squad next to his grave so that his body would fall directly in. Gara was also asked to beg forgiveness of the crowd. After a few moments' thoughts, Gara found his final words. Gentlemen, 
I ask your pardon for all my offenses and expect yours in return. Chief Gara was telling the onlookers that they should ask him for his forgiveness for their treatment of him and his Gubeño people. Naturally, they did not. The last thing Gara heard was the crack of the gun before blackness overtook him. This is a prime material for a haunting and visitors of Campo Santo today have reported hearing the cries of Cupeño warriors and their gunshots in the distance. Chief Gara is occasionally visible standing on nearby rooftops or lurking in the cemetery itself. It's said that he will duck out of sight quickly in the cemetery but is fearless and defiant at a distance. Another well-known ghost of Campo Santo Cemetery is the spectral remains of a prostitute from the early 1800s. Refused burial inside the cemetery, the story goes, the woman cursed the populace of the town. She is denied entrance even in death and today can be seen prowling the main gate. Although she will not allow people to come too close, she appears as a woman wearing a low-cut dress, long skirt, and a bandana. She walks up and down the fence, impossibly silent, and simply walks away if approached. A beautiful floral wreath hung on the gates is said to be the locus of a spiritual power. The wreath was hung by the cemetery's owners and has come to symbolize the prostitute. Like her, the wreath hangs just outside the gate, never inside. Although cemeteries aren't always haunted, when they do attract ghosts, they do so in the most dramatic way possible. At Campo Santo, the desecration of the graves has brought out a huge number of other spirits. Strange figures have been spotted in the night faintly glowing and appearing to float above the ground. Some people have thought they were employees of the cemetery, but even the most cursory investigation will prove this false. These ghosts could be anyone, any of the hundreds and hundreds of people who were buried over the years. Cold spots permeate the area and visitors walking through often experience quick bursts of chill as though an icy finger was brushing over their flesh. In the mid-1990s, the local business owners decided they had had enough. Pooling their funds, they hired a professional ghost hunting crew to find the source of the hauntings and put an end to it. Teaming up with an exorcist, the group performed an elaborate ritual intended to drive away the spirits, and it worked, to an extent, for a time. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so we can send you some updated videos. Hello, all you Spooky Corner fans.
It's a more fair bubble of heart up there. Why can't you go there? Girls on the fourth floor. So this is the guy in the three all night. And he says he usually just goes after girls. Tucky. Oh. Go down, so keep that on. Thank you. 
snow coming up in that window coming down to this direction.